Hello, good afternoon, LinkedIn. I'm here finally testing the X2 by Third Eye Gen. And this is a little open CV uh, application that's running here to, to do an object detection on this. It's taken me about six weeks to get this, you know, <laughs> this uh, video out for everybody so they can showcase it. I had some difficulties initially getting it to be very comfortable. There's a little nose bridge here uh, that I had to replace. Um, I think my Sicilian nose was a little bit too big, uh, but you know, again, this is a 42 degree field of view, had a lot of the same peripheral issues that the Magic Leap 1 has, where you only have 42 degrees, it's got to be very, very close to your eye, it is running on the X, uh, XR1 by Qualcomm, it's very powerful um, on the Android 9.0 uh, platform, and I always like Android, it's open source, it's very easy to develop applications for it, but I mean, there are a few issues with this that I foresee, number one, I've heard some, for some people at Cummins, the generator technology company, they had some quality defects versus various, uh, you know, they, I think they had a big contract for more than a, a 500 units, and you know, many of them came with different types of color on the side of the unit. Uh, they weren't comfortable, they, could, they had fitting issues, and again, they also have issues with hand tracking, and I will showcase that to you guys um, a little bit later in this video. They're, they're uh, basing this on the Motion SDK. I can tell you with confidence and a surety that it is not fully developed. The simultaneous localization of mapping is not, uh, again, 100% versus many of the other competitors in the market, uh, you know, like HoloLens 2 or even Magic Leap um, and Unreal. You know, Unreal is $1,200, the HoloLens is $3,500, and this is $2,600, the Magic Leap is 2900 with a new enterprise. So this is kind of a, on the expensive side of a hands-free device. Um, and, and again, it depends on where you are with your development processes and your budget. Uh, but, but again, they're competing against some really significant competitors in the HoloLens and Magic Leap. Um, and from what I see here in the lack of the development of the SDK and the hand gestures, this is not up to par for $2,600. And matter of fact, it's not even on the competition level of the Unreal at $2,600 versus $1,200. And that, that's saying something. But I, I want to I be optimistic here because I still believe that they can do quite a bit if they, if they completely develop and build upon the Man of Motion SDK, which I'll showcase to you guys here in a moment, uh, for hand interactions. I know much of their... Uh, and you know their go-to enterprise market strategy has been for hands-free um, interaction and development and proof of concept and prototype designs. But I, I still believe that the hands interactions coupled with the eye gaze data, this doesn't have any you know infrared emitters on your eyes. It's not able to, to track your eyes like the HoloLens 2. So again, for less than $900 more, you can buy a HoloLens 2 that has the best hand tracking in the business and the best eye tracking that I've tested so far uh, in one you know, platform with also the, the, the top-notch cloud Azure uh, you know, uh, embedded platform integration. So it's very difficult for people to compete um, with using diffractive waveguide systems like this at 500 nits that you can't use outside. Um, even though that it is drop rated out to two meters, um, you know, it's industrial rated, I wouldn't recommend dropping these. Um, and it gets very hot on the side, as you can kind of see here. Uh, none, none of the compute information or you know, specific parts and, and batteries have been moved to the back of the device like the HoloLens 2 or the Pico Neo 2, as you kind of see right here in front of me. And that's really helped quite a bit to balance the weight distribution. Um, you know, when we look back to the ODG uh, type of proof of concepts and designs, this is very similar to that with that bird bath optics and diffractive waveguides with liquid crystal and silicon as a spatial light modulator. So uh, they, they kind of took a lot of the insights from ODG and they ran with them here. Um, but I still like the product. Again, you guys know that I love spatial computing. I love the products. I love the devices. I love testing. But every product has a pro and con, has a strength and weakness. And the weakness here, I'm going to tell you right now, I've been wearing it for 20 minutes, is heat. The, the exothermic heat generation on the side of this unit is tr tremendous. The unit gets very, very hot right here. It's literally almost burning the side of my temples. And that is not a good sign, especially for technicians and engineers who are supposed to be using this in like data center, critical environments. Uh, and they don't want to be having something this, uh, this hot or this uncomfortable out in the field. Now this is the second generation from Third Eye Gen. I'm definitely hoping that they continue to improve upon it, especially with the hand tracking, which is more than problematic. It is a serious issue. And uh, I've, I've spoken with some people at Man in Motion. They said they're trying to work on it and, and develop it. 
um, and, and enhance it and improve it. But from what I've seen so far, that is not the case. So what you see at the top here is the menu that kind of comes all the way across. This little button here will, will go into the hand. I don't want to do it right now because it's incredibly buggy. I'll just and I'll showcase that to you in a moment. But what I also do, I'm going to I'll basically come out of this application. You can kind of see this open CV. And again, this is on all spatial computers, not just the third eye Gen X2. You can do this on the HoloLens 2. You can do this on anything that has a forward-facing camera. This is 13 megapixels. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump back in to uh, the main menu. And this is the main menu here. You got the App Store. Let's just go in into the App Store so you guys can see what it looks like here as it as it launches uh, all, all the available applications that they have. You can see the TensorFlow image, uh, the Facebook, Netflix, Twitter, Remote Eye. That's for uh, that application. That company, Remote Eye, has been around a while. They do AR. That was on the Hololens One, Hololens Two, Magic Leap, and so on and so forth. They have the Firefox browser on YouTube, Facebook and a couple other applications. But again, not extensive, not expansive like you would expect if you're trying to compete in an open market like that. It's very difficult. Uh, but there is, there, for me, I look at the pros and cons of this device versus many others. And because it's Android, it's open source, so you can sideload any Android applications on this. And that obviously is a big benefit to anybody who's not locked into a particular ecosystem uh, you know, versus some of these other uh, product uh, prototypes and applications out there on the open market. But let, I'm going to show you now going into the hand tracking module and just how difficult it is. So let me see if I can actually launch this from here. And I'm going to show you on my phone because I have the Mano Motion SDK on my phone. And because it's running on my phone, um, I'll be able to actually overlay that on top of this. So you can actually see what it looks like from my perspective, but also what it looks like to try to use the hand tracking SDK on this device um, in its current uh, form, which is beyond difficult. I'll say that to you. It is, uh, it's not just difficult, it's actually, um, it's unusable. Okay, let's see if I can get my hand out here. We'll try this one more time. Uh, it's still not working. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is jump this in here. So what they need to do is interact with this uh, kind of, and, um, gesture control and interaction manipulation for these continuous, like it's actually recognizing that my hand is open, it's recognizing that's the back side of my hand, it's recognizing that this mono class for the pointer and the pincher is, is, all, is all integrated. And this is the kind of hand and interaction and tracking that they need to have. Uh, without it, they're not gonna be competitive. Matter of fact, I'm highly skeptical that they would even be competitive versus Unreal at $1,200. Okay, um, but thank you guys so much. This is a very brief review on this particular piece of technology. As I, as I dive more into it, I'll definitely release another video if I can. I know they have, uh, they have their own workspace application, which is supposed to be fairly nice um, for enterprise consumers and customers. And, and some of the other applications, they have a thermal radiometric imaging device where you can use a, a, a FLIR one and put it on the top. But again, I'm very concerned about heat. I'm using this right now, and I can actually feel it burning the side of my, my head. And that is, not, that is not a good situation for any product. And I hope they take this feedback uh, very seriously. But thank you so much for sending me the product for test, and thank you all for tuning in. I always appreciate it. Have a great day.